In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. As we are all aware that presently South Africa is going through the third wave of the COVID-19 disease, um, Reverend Changase raised his concern regarding the hesitancy that is showing amongst the community regarding getting vaccinated. He specifically referred to his own congregates and said, I wonder if they've all been vaccinated. So he requested me to come today and share with you some information regarding COVID-19. At this juncture, I feel like asking how many of us are still not vaccinated because they are scared. I would be saying, please indicate by show of hand, but I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> because Reverend Chang, I said, we'll see the culprits, which include my own husband. <laughs> but I'm just going to do what he requested me to do, which is to share the information about COVID. Um, for me to explain about the vaccination, I will have to start by explaining about COVID. So where did this COVID start from? On the 31st of December in 2019, it was reported that there was an uncommon, very deadly type of a chest infection or pneumonia, which was spreading in a city of Wuhan in China. This disease was spreading very quickly, unlike all other types of pneumonia. So this was reported to the World Health Organization, which is responsible for the health of the whole country. And by January 2020, the World Health Organization referred to this as a pandemic, meaning that it was going to affect the whole country. By March 2020, 114 countries were already affected. These were countries like the United States, United Kingdom, Italy, where there was a lot of devastation because of this disease. So what were the symptoms of this new disease now? The people had flu-like symptoms like fever, cough, fatigue, sore throat, muscle pains, a runny nose, and some reported that there was loss of taste and loss of smell, which is a, a, a symptom that is peculiar to a pneumonia. How was it spreading? This disease was spreading by droplet infection, meaning that as we coughed, as we talked, or as we sneezed, drops would come out and settle on the surfaces. And then it would be spread by inhaling these drops or by contact with these drops. That is why we needed to wear masks we needed to wash hands because by touching these drops, we would then touch our faces, touch our eyes, our nose, and then we would get the disease. So, as this disease began to spread, it also came to South Africa. It was only in March, on the 4th of March, when it was announced that a 38-year-old male who had traveled to Italy with his wife and 10 other colleagues 
came back having these symptoms of COVID. And that is how then it started to spread in South Africa. So what is the cause of COVID? When investigations were done, it was discovered that there is this uh, virus called the Corona virus. Corona because it has spikes like a crown and it's it, the, 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 the coronavirus, it was not the first time that it was identified. There are other types of coronaviruses, but this one was peculiar because it caused this disease that was very deadly and spreading very fast. And then how was the disease called COVID-19? It was called COVID-19 because co stands for corona, V stands for virus, D, disease, and 19 because it was discovered in 2019. So in South Africa, as we said, it was discovered in March. By the 15th of March, our president, President Ramaphosa, declared the state of disaster because they had noticed that it was now starting to spread in, even here in South Africa. So that state of disaster, we remember, it changed our lifestyles a lot. Schools were closed, churches were closed, and we were expected to wear a mask in all public areas. By the end of March, we had cases that were over a thousand, and we had two deaths by the first day of the lockdown. The first wave was not very uh, deadly in South Africa, and the wave started to flatten by the end of May. And then the lockdown guidelines were, or regulations were relaxed. Come December 2020, then we started to have the second wave. The second wave was due to the events that took place at the end of the year and people have started to relax with regards to wearing of masks and adhering to the guidelines for COVID-19. So the second wave was very deadly because of the new variant now that was identified in South Africa called the 501YV2 variant. By the end of December, 1.5 million cases had been confirmed and deaths were 542 already in South Africa. If I can share with you the effects of the second wave in the hospitals, the beds were finished, there were no more beds, especially in private hospitals. Even people with medical aid could not get beds in private hospitals. So they had to be admitted in our private hospitals. Oxygen also was diminished. A person with pneumonia, especially with this type of pneumonia, needs a lot of oxygen because the bronchioles inside the lungs are blocked by mucus. But oxygen was diminished and there were people who could not get oxygen. The mortuaries were full. There was no space in mortuaries in the hospital. So we had to move bodies to Gay Street 
which was a mortuary that had been closed before it had to be opened in order to accommodate more bodies. That was how serious was the second wave. The country recorded 18,762 infections by the end of the second wave. And that's how serious it was. And we all remember families lost their loved ones, especially couples. We lost a lot of couples. And even in our own congregations, we lost our members. So now we are in the third wave of COVID-19. I'm sure we have heard that Gauteng, followed by the Western Cape, are the ones that are mostly affected at the moment. Yes, we thank God that here in KwaZulu Natal at the moment, the wave is still going quite steadily up, but we are not sure where it is, when it is going to really go up. So last night, according to the numbers, it was said that we are getting about 18,000 new cases within 24 hours. And that's, we are getting about 215, I'm talking about in one day. So that is how devastating this condition is. Talking about deaths in the whole world, in the whole world we are now at 3 million, nine, 3.91 million. That is how many deaths we have in the whole world now. So coming to the vaccine, what is this vaccine? A vaccine is there in order to protect us by helping us develop our immunity in order to be able to fight this virus. What is immunity? God gave us this natural immunity. This is the ability of the body to fight any infection that comes into our bodies. How does it happen? If any microorganism gets into our body, our bodies are naturally able to develop antibodies in order to fight those microorganisms. This is called an antibody antigen reaction. But now there are factors that will reduce our immunity. That includes uh, age, other conditions like a uh, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, also the number, the, 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 the number of microorganisms that enters our body will make our immunity not able to fight the disease. So that is why you'll find that other, piece, other people will get the infection and just have mild symptoms, but other people will have the infection and succumb to the infection. So now a vaccine contains attenuated or weakened part of the virus that is, act, that is inactive. Once it is injected in the body, it will make the body develop these antibodies that will be able to fight the microorganism if it enters the body. Furthermore, it will even create memory cells. These memory cells assist the body in such a way that even next time, if these microorganisms enters the body, the body will immediately recognize that, oh, this is the coronavirus 
and the antibodies that are needed are these and it will quickly make those antibodies and fight the microorganism. So the, the, the vaccine is the inactive part. It is not going to cause an infection, but it will assist the body to fight the microorganism. There are other vaccines that we have been using before. We all know about the polio, virus, the polio vaccine, the smallpox vaccine that is given to babies when they are still young so that they can fight polio or smallpox. So it's not the first time that we're coming across a vaccine. And those vaccines have helped a lot to reduce diseases like polio and smallpox. Nowadays, you don't see babies with polio and smallpox because of these vaccines. And furthermore, when a lot of people in the community have received the vaccines, the country develops what is called the herd immunity. What is herd immunity? Herd immunity occurs when maybe about 70% of the population have received the vaccine in such a way that when the vaccine comes, it won't hurt time spreading because most people already have immunity because they have received the vaccine. So by getting the vaccine, you are not helping yourself only. You are also helping other people the community in order to be protected against that disease. What steps are taken to develop the vaccine? The vaccine must undergo clinical trials. It's a number of them, not even one. And then it will be submitted to the external panel of experts from the World Health Organization who will make a decision based on the results of the clinical trial, whether they approve it or not. Even when it goes to the particular country, once it is approved by who, it will again go through experts to check if the country is able to use it based on the World Health Organization's recommendations. So what has South Africa done in order to roll out COVID-19 uh, vaccine? In February 17, they started vaccinating the healthcare workers. There they used the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which we usually call the j, &J vaccine. j, &J vaccine was a study and only one dose was given to the healthcare workers. And then they, in May, they started with the over 60, the 60 and above. And then presently they are now vaccinating the teachers. It has been announced that by July 15, the 50 and above can start uh, registrating, registr doing registration for the vaccine. How do you register? If you register, you need your ID book and your medical aid number. If you don't medical aid, you can still register. And then first, you must access internet. It can be through your phone, it can be through uh, your laptop or computer. You will need data when you do registration. And once you access the home page for registration, you will are prompted by questions which you are expected to answer. And it's a very short process. It takes about two minutes. And once you have re finished registering, you will get an SMS which will tell you that you are now in the queue for registration. When it is your turn 
to register, you'll get another SMS which will tell you the date for your vaccination and the venue where you are supposed to go for vaccinating. So it's very important to give the correct address because when they give you the venue, you are giving a venue that is near your place. What happens on the vaccination day? On the vaccination day, you will be screened for COVID, like we always do when we come to church. And then you will uh, be assisted to fill in a consent form that you agree to be vaccinated. And then before you are vaccinated, you will be asked questions about your allergies and about other conditions that you have then you will get your vaccination. It will be on your left upper arm. And after you have been vaccinated, you will be observed for about 15 minutes to see if you are not reacting to the vaccination. Then if you are okay, after 15 minutes, you will be discharged. When you are discharged, make sure that you get your appointment card because you will need that appointment card when you come back for the second vaccine. Okay, what I did not mention is the fact that right now they are using the Pfizer vaccine. Pfizer vaccine is the one that is available now and it consists of two doses. You get the first dose, and then after 48 days, you'll get your second dose. That is to assist you in order to develop your memory cells. You remember, I said memory cells are to assist the body to recognize the microorganism when it comes for the second time. And then it will develop antibodies quickly. Common side effects of the vaccine. What are you going to expect once you have been vaccinated? You'll expect the arm, sometimes it can be sore and it will be red. That will be on the injection site. You can have fever, you can have a headache, fatigue, muscle aches, nausea. These do not indicate that you are reacting to the vaccine. It shows that your body is now producing antibodies against the, micro, the microbes that are weakened. Remember I said the vaccine is weakened part of the microbe. So as you get these symptoms, it's the body developing antibodies against this weakened part of the microorganism. This can take two to six hours. It may peak after 24 hours and by two to three, two, three days, it should have been over. Other people don't get anything. So it depends on the person. In extreme cases, you can have a reaction but we always make sure that there is a doctor who will do a resuscitation if there is a serious reaction. I know it has been reported that some people get clots as a side effect of this um, vaccine. Yes, it does happen, but it's about a very few people that get that reaction. Now, are we prepared to vaccinate? I will make an example by myself. Am I vaccinated? Yes, I vaccinated. Was it easy to make a decision? No, it was not easy. I was also scared. But how did I decide to vaccinate? 
I did a risk assessment. I weighed the number of people that have died because of COVID and the number of people that have died because of the vaccine. I found that really there was quite a few, a, a large number of people that have died because of COVID. And really, I haven't heard of people that have died because of vaccination. So I chose to vaccinate. Hoping that this will help people to make a decision to vaccinate in order to help themselves and the country and including i hope that it will help my husband as well to decide <laughs> to go <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, wait. <laughs> can you put our hands together for mom Dawed? well thank you very much mama for sharing the information um, maybe before she sits down, do we have any questions? Um, yes, um, can you just stand and just ask your question while she's still here? Uh, Mama, I would love to know uh, what effect have you experienced after vaccinating? Were there any side effects or it was just perfect? Okay, thank you for the question. Um, like I said, I was also scared. So, I decided to go to vaccinate when I was on leave. I said, okay, I'd rather go while I'm on leave so that if I get any side effects, I will go back home and attend to my side effects. I went there, I vaccinated. From vaccination, as a housewife, I said, oh, I, I, I have some things that I have to buy that's cross I said, but I'm scared. I said, I, let me go. I went and did groceries, then I went back home. At home, oh, I've got washing to do. I did my washing, I finished my washing. Obviously, I prepared supper. I did not have anything. I didn't experience anything. But I will tell you the truth, at work, because many people vaccinated. Some of them, on the following day, they came back saying, oh, and they feel very tired. Others, they complained of the injection site. But after a day, they came back and went normally. So it depends on different people. But I haven't seen anyone having serious side effects. Yes, Jean? I just want to know, because I, we had the Pfizer, but I've heard that a lot of people after this, on the second one, get quite ill with it. Have you heard anything like that? Mm, to tell the truth, with Arvikan, where I work, mm. we are starting to give the second dose tomorrow, which is Monday. So really, I, I don't have any, any information. But from other facilities that are already giving it, really, I haven't had anything. For now, mm. they have only said it's only two doses. So once you've got your second dose, that is enough. But like we all know, this is a new infection. Mm. New information comes every day. Like yesterday, those who were listening to the, to the TV, they heard that they've identified that the variant that is happening now is the Delta virus. And it's the same one that was in India which was very, very deadly. They, they say uh, um, prevention is better than cure. Um, um, uh, when we um, were infected, myself and my wife, we were prescribed by the doctors um, to take zinc, to take uh, vitamin C, to take um, dyspreen, to take... Um, vitamin D3, all those things. Will it make a difference 
if you don't vaccinate but continue to take uh, the prescription that I've just mentioned. Because uh, I'm, well, I'm one of your convent this morning. On Monday, I'm going to go and have my jab. And all along, I've been wrestling with this thing. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but uh, my wife has got it. And, uh, and I'm deciding I'm going on, on, on Monday, on my day off. If I get fatigued, then I'll sleep <laughs> and rest. But will it help to take these prescriptions? and not vaccinate. Okay. These prescriptions, yes, they are going to boost your immunity. But if you are exposed to the vaccine, you will not be having the antibodies that are going to fight against the microorganism. Mm. Your immunity might be boosted, but you won't be having antibodies. So by having the vaccine, you are going to develop the antibodies that are quickly going to fight it. So it's better to have the vaccine because they will develop you the antibodies that are going to fight the microorganism. But maybe these uh, prescriptions will just make you incre increase your immunity just to be strong enough. But the, the, the severity of the disease might be more serious. No, thanks, thanks, man. Yes, Baba, my twin one. Is there a chance uh, that you may have uh, the poetry <laughs> <laughs> The most important thing is to develop the herd immunity, which is a large number of people getting vaccinated in such a way that the microorganism doesn't have a chance to infect more people. Once the country has had immunity, then it becomes less pos a, a, a possible to have more waves. Like right now, United States of America, because they vaccinated quite a lot of people very fast, they are now starting to relax the, 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 the COVID regulations because they are reaching herd immunity. China, for example, it has also reached herd immunity because quite a number of people have been vaccinated. So the more we vaccinate, the more we are not going to have more waves.